staying well within the time. I think uh, we are going to make up some of the lost time. Uh, may I now request Romy to give us his address. I'm the odd one actually because um, I don't teach. I used to teach. Um, I have thoughts on teaching, so maybe I'll share those with you. I think the, <clears throat> the base paper that was prepared is very good. You know, it, 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 it convinces me that the profession of architecture and the field of education of architecture is heading rapidly for the ICU. All right, it is a bad situation and I think that we need to stop describing its condition but find a cure for it. There is undoubtedly very little one can argue about that there is serious trouble happening. Now, how do we go about curing this? Uh, from my point of view is linked education and the profession is very closely linked. So we have to look therefore first at the profession. Our Institute of Architects is hopelessly weak. Here lies the first problem with the lack of respect of the profession. There are four classical professions that we inherited from the British, being a doctor, being an engineer, being an accountant, and being an architect. Now, it so happens that in the other three professions, the professional bodies are very strong. We are the only classical profession with a hopelessly weak professional body. We cannot have good, strong educational institutions where the professional body is strong. So to me, um, the future course of action in the field of education is linked to the future prospects of our profession. We are entering a global period and we are completely badly equipped for it. Professionally and educationally. Now, the opportunities that we will get in our future, in our teaching and in our profession, will depend um, on two things, our capabilities and our potentials. And I would still say that our capabilities are not of a caliber that is going to see us in the 21st century. What is going to happen is that if we continue the way we are doing, without actually facing uh, the fact that we are sick, uh, we will descend to very low levels of professional competence. And it's no use relying on the government and the council. For me, that's like asking the RTO to improve the traffic condition. Right? The council is a rubber stamping, useless bureaucratic body. Let's forget about it. Anybody who thinks the council can tell us what we should be learning, or how should we be practicing, no. They're all has-been people. Let's not even pay attention to it. Because if you as a profession, and I would, I would specifically say as the Indian Institute of Architects, is not able to get its act together, then we end up blaming government. We have enormous potential, but they are so weak. The capabilities are so weak. Now, we have to turn this fear of our future. Collectively, the architectural profession is mourning and is afraid of the future. It is complaining. 90% architects you meet complain. I don't think we can meet our future like that. We have to be prepared for a global encounter. What is happening? Our profession of architecture has an elite of foreign trained architects. There are two categories of foreign trained architects. 
One is the Indian train, Indians who go abroad and come back, and the others are the expats who arrive here. So there's already, the Brahmins have already taken over. And why are we doing that? Because the schools of architecture are not able to train to the levels at which global standards have to perform. Now, we have to address this, and there are ways to address it. The fact that 25,000 students are coming out, or 50,000 students are coming, doesn't matter. Do we have three or four elite schools? We don't. We are treating all schools at par. We are like, like government. You know. We treat all poverty people below the poverty line. They're all the same to us. You have to cultivate certain schools which become elite schools. Those elite schools, it's up to the educational institutions to decide that. And today, if the IITs can do it, Architectural education institutions can also do it. We will decide that we will reach global standards in our training. What are we doing is that currently all the best students from our educational institutions are going abroad for masters or for, they start filling in the forms in third year. Right? Where are we going, what are we doing? Right? Absolutely no interest in being here. That's the true condition of our profession. Because the profession has become a dull place to be in. It's the condition of the profession. And because we are not able to create any sense of excitement in it. So we have to relook at this. Yes, we are in ICU. We have to meet on common platforms with other with a wider range of architects and consider our future because definitely if we do not attend to it we will we will be very we will be very useful in obliging the professions which are coming in from the west or looking for draftsmen so we are going to become the doormats and the professionals in their um, BPOs. There's already a huge amount of that happening. So you have to reflect on this um, issue. So to be more specific, what I would like to suggest to the Indian Institute, Indian Institute of Architects, and I'm a fellow of it, so I'm suggesting it to myself, that the institute is of no use to the profession at this moment because it's not able to lay down any standards which we have to follow, which the government respects. The government does not respect the Institute of Architects. Let us first turn around and get that respect. So what I would like to suggest is that the Indian Institute of Architects approaches the Royal Institute of British Architects and forms an association with it and starts bringing in ways and means to strengthen this profession. Let me tell you that as a practicing architect, whenever there is a question of standards, whenever there's a question of agreements, whenever there's a question of um, planning your work, etc., I turn to the Royal Institute of British Architect documents because they are all available. Now, it's a simple collaboration. We form a collaboration as architects between the Royal Institute of British Architects and the Indian Institute of Architects, and we take the, strengthen the Institute of Architects into something that the government respects. We have to, as private professionals, whether we are in government or not, but as a profession, we are a private. We are not a government um, donated status. We are professionals. We have to acquire a status in the next four or five years where the government asks us what they should be doing. At the present moment, they are telling us 
what we should be doing. We have to reverse that. And we have to reverse that by throwing out lifelines to people who can help us. Secondly, I said, I think we have to now consider the concept of creating elite schools. In other words, schools of a different category altogether. Schools which have completely different teaching processes. I've been to a number of schools uh, in India and abroad, and let me tell you one thing, there is no set rule how to teach architecture. Because you're teaching creativity. Everybody has a different way of teaching it. Every institution has a different way of teaching it. So in order to form elite schools, existing schools should, should be able to say that in the next five years, let us assume that we will achieve global standards in the kind of architects we are going to be turning out. Um, I think we have, to, we have to be able to interact with the government, but from a great uh, position of strength. We cannot, I think we cannot, um, we cannot go the way we are going to become the second class draftsman of global architects. Every builder has got fancy guys who come in from Singapore or from Canada. They leave the 3Ds with us and then they find the Indian offices to fill the details in. At a quarter the price, one tenth the price. The builder doesn't respect us. The client doesn't respect us. Marasis, go play your tabla. We have to turn this around. We are one of the classic four professions. The community respects doctors and engineers. It does not respect architects. We have to, we have not time. We've got four or five years to do this. If we don't turn this round, I think we'll just become like, uh, you know, film technicians and editors and hundreds of other new professions which have come up around us. And we will, have let, we will have lost that opportunity because it, it, it is during our watch, all the teachers here and the professionals, during our watch that this change is coming. So let me, um, let me uh, plead with you to rethink our future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Romy. Uh, it, was, it was nice to hear you in a passionate mode about doing something, otherwise we know where